It helped to know that um, you didn't need a shutout to win. Makes it a lot easier. I mean, when you know you can make four or five mistakes every night, life's pretty good. Do you remember how many shutouts you had that year? I do. One? Each. <laughs> Each. So it really didn't matter. Um, the other thing that stands out about, about you guys, especially in, in this season, was that you basically shared the net. And common uh, belief is that that's not supposed to be able to work. Obviously, it can work. What made it work? How did it work? Well, I think we both pushed each other to be better, more than anything. I mean, you had to play well to keep playing, get a chance to get back in the net. So I wanted to be good, and he wanted to be good. And I think we forced each other to be better. Yeah, certainly a great deal of pride when we took the ice, but I never sensed any ego ever when we're battling for the net. We wanted to be in the net, we wanted to play, but at no time did ego get in the way. Uh, now, uh, another theory that is... Um, that is almost always followed is uh, the regular season is one thing and the playoffs are another, and um, you're supposed to have a first stringer in the playoffs, and you did, and it was you. Um, well, I will get Andy's reaction to that first. Well, uh, it, it had been typically Glenn's approach as we arrived at playoffs to de de dedicate a guy. And, uh, you know, the, the first time through as we got to the final against the Islanders, he called on me. The, the second time through as we won our first championship, he called on Grant, but injury took him out and I was there to fill in. The third time through, he called on Grant. And as we marched through those playoffs in that record fashion, who's going who's gonna to argue with the decision? He looked like a genius. Are you better uh, in the playoffs night after night for having only played 46 games, appeared in 46 games in the regular season as opposed to 70? I mean, do you, do you feel the freshness? I don't know if you're better, but at the same time, you're, mentally you're better. I don't think you get as tired mentally. And as everybody knows, it takes two good goalies to win a Stanley Cup. So you have to prepare to play every night. And having Andy as a security blanket in the playoffs makes it a lot easier. How would you like to play today when those uh, combined shutouts could be uh, 20 instead of two? Again, I, I don't think we ever, Grant and I never measured ourselves that way. It was, it was too easy for us to measure ourselves in the win column every night. That was it. That was the bottom line. We didn't get flattered by the other numbers and nobody really cared about the other numbers. But it's tougher to score now and goalies should like that, no? Yes and no. I still like an exciting game, whether it be one nothing, 2-1. Each team gives up 30, 40 shots. Their scoring chances, I still enjoy that. Yeah. For sure. The, the best goalies today are giving up two and a half. They're still the best goalies if they're giving up three and a half. And how did your com equipment compare to what you see now? Uh, I might be just a shade heavier. Just a shade. Just a shade. Well, Grant and I discussed this earlier, and we did want to take a moment to talk about that practice is fun thing. We'd like to have a moment to re <laughs> reflect that comment, Glenn. Um, I think this team may be more responsible for the improvements in goalie equipment than any other team in the history. <laughs> now we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't leave the impression that it was you guys at one end and all the forwards scoring all those goals at the other end. There were some defensemen that you had to count on. Uh, how protected did you feel uh, when, it, when it really mattered? No, no, when it really mattered, all our guys could play good defense. I mean, for the forwards right back through the defensemen. You didn't have to worry about it. If it had to be a one nothing game, our guys could play that type of hockey. But at the same time, you also knew if it was going to be a wide open scoring game, that you would have that security blanket that they would get you that extra two or three goals you needed. You were fond of your defensemen? I think we, we came to believe that we could win anyway. And uh, whether it was battles of Alberta or whether it's beating the Flyer, or, uh, sorry, the Islanders one nothing in game one of the, the 84, championship we could win anyway and with those horses in front of us they they did what had to be done i believe john shannon has a couple of those defensemen with him as we twirl around here i'm not sure where he is i or do they david are. i do david right Take over away. here i have 21 randy greg 29 don jackson <laughs> just to uh randy to work on the point that david and, and grant and andy were talking about uh, all the stars up front, you had goaltenders of note. Did you ever feel ignored on this team, 
when people were talking about how good the Oilers were? And we were happy to be ignored because, uh, you know, when you have the luxury of playing with some amazing players, can you imagine having Mark Messier and Wayne Gretzky and all the great uh, forwards? And then looking at having two great goaltenders as well, arguably two of the best goaltenders in the NHL, but completely different strategies. You know, Grant was hardly ever in his net. He was always going out. I'm not sure that's a compliment, though, is it? <laughs> An absolute compliment. Uh, you know, he had his angles. He knew exactly how to play. He handled the puck beautifully. Andy, on the other hand, was a stay-at-home uh, goaltender. We won't talk about how he handled the puck, but both of them, in the same way, were remarkable, and it was just a pleasure to play. You had to change your style in the way you played with them, but you were happy to play in front of them. Donnie, when you were back behind the net and your Grant was goaltending or Andy, who talked more? Was, was Grant a talker? Was Andy a chatter guy? Um, I didn't know that they could talk. <laughs> Um, you, know, you know, Randy was a, was a talker. And, uh, well, the doc was always a talker. Yeah, the, the doc was always a talker, and, and we talked a lot, and uh, we helped each other uh, a lot uh, in breakouts. Um, and, uh, you know, that was, uh, you, know, you know, my theme and, and uh, Randy's that we were always, uh, when he was going to get the puck, uh, uh, I was going back as hard as I could uh, to get my outlet, and, uh, and he was the same uh, for me. I always felt that, uh, you know, he was there uh, when I was in trouble. The game in 2018, they always talk about transition of the defenseman moving the puck to the forwards. This team did this 30 years ago, moving the puck to the forwards better than anybody else. How much pressure did you feel to do that every game? Um, you know, to me, that was the, the art of, of our job uh, more than anything. And... Uh, um, you know, almost to the point where, you know, after 33, my first 33 games, uh, I had no goals and no assists. And, and uh, Glenn goes, how about getting more involved in the play offensively? So all I had to do is watch Paul Coffey. And then uh, when he passed the puck, he went from the goal line to the front of the net. And so uh, that's how I got my first goal from, from Wayne and, and Mark, shorthanded. <laughs> and Randy, you're a local guy. You grew up here played for the Bears, played for the Oilers. Just one quick thought, what it meant to be part of the culture of this city in so many ways. You know, I can't imagine being a Stanley Cup champion in a city that is not your own, but to be able to share that with your family, your friends, uh, everyone in your community, it really was an amazing time. Ladies and gentlemen, 21, Randy Gregg, 29, Don Jackson. David. Great spokesman for the defense, and one more time, your applause for the last line of defense, Grant Fuhr and Andy Moog. Thanks, guys. <laughs>